Hey guys, what could be more relaxing than watching a former MPL member deface $400 of cards because he disagrees with the artists retweeting a post from a conservative person? Tell me what is more social justice than that. I think we live in a society, and especially magic, I don't see this in developers, I don't see this in graphic design, I don't see this in anime, of course not. Like, the Fate Grand Order is one of the games I'm playing now, and Fire Emblem Hero, sometimes you see me posting about it on this channel, but Pokemon, I play a lot of Pokemon, I have another channel called Pokelion, and none of these communities have the same social justice atmosphere that magic has where to be one of the cool kids, you have to deface $400 of Teresa Nielsen Force of Wales because she liked a tweet or her wife liked a tweet that was offensive to you. I don't know what it is about magic except that Nintendo is very unbiased. Nintendo is just like, whatever, make your Pokemon Go channels, make your, they're not, Nintendo is not going to sponsor certain people and not sponsor other people. They have a very, very strict criteria. And obviously it has to be kid friendly. The same with Fate Grand Order. They don't have the political, you don't see those people political. You just see them enjoying the hobby and that's that. You don't see people defacing a Pokemon card because the artist said something offensive or the artist, artist's spouse liked a tweet that was from someone who was offensive. You don't see this in any other community. Anime, our community is the type of community to reject certain anime playmats because they are offensive. And I got to thinking, like really just thinking, like why is this the case? Like when I talk about developers, developers are mostly male. And I can say that because that is statistics. And my developer, who is now in medical school, who is my CTO, she is female. And she will tell you most developers are male. She's not going to make some BS story about you know how hard it was for her to learn development. No, nah, she's not like that. If you have gone to NYU or you're at around NYU's campus, uh, New York University, or law school, any law school, the females there are just incredibly strong. They're not going to allow you to pay for stuff. Because they're going to split the bill and everything is split. Most of my female friends were like that. Even when I was dating, they would feel very confident and they would split the bill. They don't want to be pampered. They don't want to be treated differently. Same with my gay friends. My best, gay, my best friend was gay and now he's a doctor. He's a legit doctor. And my other best friend... I only had a few friends, and I was very popular at NYU, so I had a few best friends. Uh, she was a lesbian and one of the founders of Kickstarter. She didn't say, hey, treat me differently because I'm awesome and you know I'm non-binary. No, she just killed it. Like I don't really understand this atmosphere where somebody, Emma, before... She was called Emma, had an ELO of below 1500, and then suddenly now has rebranded themselves. I, 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 that's offensive. I don't want to mean rebranded. I mean, has created like a new persona. I mean, the ELO, I, I'll just use facts right now. The ELO for Sean and Emma are two different ELOs. Even the data is different. So the ELO from the past is no longer the ELO from the future. And that's crazy because that's just data and you're manipulating numbers. But hey, a below 1500 ELO means that you're worse than about 19.9 million Magic players. I'll put it that way. Because everyone starts at a 1500 ELO and most people don't play at a GP or something like that that would affect their ELO. And this is just numbers. So the fact that we have like Ali and this has become more popular than I thought it would. So some things, I muted the Fred. 
So you like Trump MAGA stuff? No, I don't have screenshots anymore. I deleted them back when I thought I didn't have to see her work anymore. That's on me, and I've learned that lesson. So the lesson is what? To harass people and take screenshots of their wives posting and liking Donald Trump stuff? That's the lesson that we learned that we're teaching. I'm going to step back a little bit and tell you that magic was not always this way. For many of you, since the majority of you, I assume 19 million of you are new players, you don't understand what magic was and magic is to me because you weren't, you weren't the kid that was getting bullied for playing magic. I gave up magic at NYU because all my friends thought it was very nerdy and they said, don't play it. It's a game for losers. And that's what it was, even when I was in college, but especially in middle school, high school, elementary school, our English teacher in seventh grade, she would take our cards, say that it was worshiping Satan, and then just burn them. Like she would take out her lighter, she was a smoker, and just burn them, like in front of us. And that was during Mercadian Mask. I don't, oh, Dark Ritual was the one in Mercadian Mask. So I was like, hmm, we didn't have Demonic Tutor back then. What was the card? Yeah, it was Dark Ritual. She saw Dark Ritual, she read Dark Ritual, and as a seventh grade English teacher, she was like, man, we, we're not doing this. And I remember it's because we had these friends, uh, these pen pals from Alaska, and they would send us salmon stuff, and we would send them stuff in the U.S. And one of the pen pals, one of my friend Brandon, was trying to send a pen pal some magic cards, like a magic deck, and one of the cards was Dark Ritual, and she freaked the blank out. That's my childhood of magic. It's not, hmm, I need to get some likes on Twitter. Hmm, I need to get, you know, my, my MPL invite. Even though I'm a bad player. It was not like that. We didn't play with card sleeves. We didn't really care about the value of cards. Foils were not valuable today. Foils only became valuable after ED8. Then the price, like, prices spiked like crazy because foil is mainly ed But back in the day, to get four foil cards, like, you would be accused of cheating if you only had one in your deck because no one used sleeves, and they do, they do curve differently even back then, especially nowadays, right? So my point is, I do not understand why somebody would deface a card based on they, they didn't like the artist's for liking a Donald Trump tweet. And I don't understand why this is a big deal. Have these people never worked at a company before? Even at my small company, we have a vegan. And that's probably the vegan calling me now. We have a vegan. And then we have a Texas boy who just eats beef and they can coexist. They can work together. We have Jessica who's extremely liberal, like like really out there type of stuff, but she works with Norman, who is a developer and one of the most conservative people I know. I bet you that's uh, lunchtime now. They're calling me and asking me to pay for their lunches. All right, I'll, I'll worry about that later. It's uh, probably the two interns we have over the summer. They just continued, they call. Surprisingly, Generation Z, instead of texting me, they'll call, and that's how I know it's them because my current employees, they'll just text me, right, if they need something. Uh, but those employees will, uh, those interns will call whenever they need something. And they are out on the field. So I'm not sure what is the, that they need right now. But finishing up this video, people are just looking to be offended. And they just, I don't think we should encourage this behavior where people who are offended easily get all the likes and things. And I understand that my perspective is not the mainstream. My perspective is definitely not a Magic the Gathering approved perspective, but I'm entitled to have it, as is Teresa Nielsen, as is the people criticizing her. My only concern is when you do something like defacing a card, you can do that, but the video has, what, 42,000 views on it, like on Twitter, and people are, you know... If the point of defacing Teresa Nielsen's artwork is because you truly do not like what she stands for, do that privately. Don't do that in a video that 400, 100,000 people are going to watch. 
because that's going to encourage people to attack Teresa. The same with this person who had almost no Twitter following. I've done a little bit more research now. And all she does is attack, attack Teresa. She has 50 tweets attacking Teresa and every tweet gets more and more violent and more and more hateful. Look, you can say, hey, Teresa, I don't agree with you and post one time and say, you know, I support Gary. I understand where he's coming from. Great. But why do it 50 times? Or just do it in private. You guys don't know this, but I do. I did talk back in the day when I had grievances against Tolarian and the Manosaurus. I took those grievances private. A lot of stuff on Facebook group has never come out, and that's because I left it private. Now, some of that stuff would be very... A lot of your views is different from my view because of things I've seen that you have not seen. The same with the mana source. We, my last Gmail chat with him on Gchat was, hey, you're doing a great job. I mean, I can show it to you. I don't need to screenshot everything. It's there it's sitting in my email. It's, hey, mana source, you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. So when you're trying to do something and you might say it's hypocritical MTG line for you to do this, but I'm kind of like the only, like they're kind of pushing me in this corner where like I have to fight. I have to bark a little bit and I have to bite a little bit because magic is not this for me. Magic has turned into something that I don't recognize anymore. It used to be a fun game where no one cared about values, no one even had sleeves, that you, it was you and your magic friends, which were all male, all my magic friends from middle school, high school, to college, to elementary school, every single one of them, no female play magic from that age group. That's just my personal experience. Now, maybe 40% of them are female, I don't know. But I'm allowed to have my experience. I'm allowed to have a perspective, just like Teresa Nielsen and her wife is. If you don't like my perspective, fine. But why put me on blast? Why show everyone that I'm defacing the card? Deface the card all you want, but don't make a video about it to get it viral if you know the video is going to. The same thing with Tolarian. I really disagreed with him. I would have been so much more in his corner had he not made that video comparing Jeremy to something really bad. I'm not even going to mention it on this channel, but like you guys already know. Like, yes. You might not like Jeremy from on sleeve media the quarterly. And you do my I guarantee you that if Tolarian doesn't make that video, Jeremy still can play magic today. Or at least he would not be banned for life. Cause that video was the nail in the coffin and that told Wizard of Coach, yep, the biggest magic YouTuber is telling us to ban him for being abusive. Let's do it. There's a lot of things where I believe and I really do believe this, that magic can be great again to use something that I, I bet you they're going to clip that and then put it in like a Donald Trump meme or something. But magic can be what it used to be, which is a group of friends. Magic for me was I had difficulty making friends when I was younger. I had a social anxiety. Um, I have all these things that the man of source says he has, but I've overcome them, right? Depression. And, and I still have them today. I'm not that social. If you watch my other channel, you know that I don't like hanging out with people. I just like a few people I know, mostly just my employees, because I can kind of pay them to hang out with me, right? It's hard. It's uh, tough to say that, but yes. And they can't kind of leave me. So I have anxiety of people leaving because my two fiancés left me. So I have like this need to make sure that you're going to be with the company for seven plus years and that's how i advertise all of our jobs are you going to be here for seven years tell me your plan is seven or ten years and if the plan doesn't include my company i'm like oh okay i'm not into you in hiring you as much anymore so i and you know having a startup people leave all the time so it's this anxiety that i have that and you know, I had amazing magic friends when I was in law school. I had Gavin and Devin, and I still remember their names. And it was a long time ago. And it sucked to leave them. It really did suck because that was my favorite time in magic where 
and again, we didn't have any females playing magic with us, right? That's 40% is not what we had at all. I do have this anxiety, anxiety that if I become really close friends with you and invest a lot in you, you're just going to leave because that's what startup life is. But I've been able to make a business. I've been able to do a lot of things and overcome a lot of things because of this game, because it helped me make friends. Magic, when I was little, was a game for people who couldn't make friends. And hey, you play Magic, I play Magic, let's be friends. That's what it was. It's not this. It's not you sitting around streaming by yourself for 24 hours and having no actual life. It's not you not working a job. It's not you having no coworkers to socialize with. It was a very important part of my life because it taught me how to make friends. And for that, I'll be always grateful. Bye.